Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. In this video, let's build an Android application that can predict diabetes by using a trained machine learning model. In this application, the user can give in the details such as age, glucose, blood pressure and so on and predict whether uh, the diabetes will be positive or negative. So we have already worked on building this diabetes model. I'll also give the link of that video in this video description. So once we have this trained model, we can deploy this as a free public API using ngrop and then we will link that API to this Android application and we can use it. So for this Android app building, we will be using a no code kind of a tool called as MIT app inventor, which is basically a drag and drop kind of a tool so that we can easily kind of prototype these ML models and have a really good user interface for this. So this is just a simple example and again you can kind of uh, increase the complexity here where you can have multiple screens each screen contributing to a particular disease or you can also have a drag and drop saying that uh, let's say we have a drag and drop for diabetes.ai and rdisease.ai and each of this would call that specific endpoint and get a prediction out of this. So the main idea again here is to when you have a model right so instead of just presenting it as an API or some kind of like a uh, table or something right so we can just uh, you know build these simple UIs and give a prototype or a POC kind of a thing so that we don't have to spend a lot of time on building the UI and we can just focus on building the models and other things okay so that's the agenda of today's video and let's get started. So as I said, the first thing that we need is the diabetes model.pickle file and uh, I'll also give a GitHub repository link that has the notebook to train this uh, model with the diabetes data set and also this notebook that uh, host the API using ngrof. So you just have to run all these uh, kind of cells. I have already made a video about this. Maybe I'll also link that video in this video description. So once you have this file, uh, run all these uh, cells. So here we are just like installing all the required libraries and then uh, we are basically using the fast API library in order to uh, build a API for this uh, model called as diabetes thing. So here we are loading this diabetes model.pickle file to this diabetes model and we have this uh, input values kind of like declared here. And then we are building this diabetes prediction endpoint and uh, creating a post API or sorry a post endpoint where uh, the user or the client should post a JSON data which basically contains all these details pregnancies glucose age and all these details and get a prediction for it. So that's the idea. So once we get that data we extract all those individual features apply it to the model predict it and return whether the person is diabetic or not. So this is how we have built this API. And in order to deploy this, right, so for a temporary deployment, we can use ngrop, which basically tunnels your uh, local port to a public URL that anyone can access. So that's what we are using. And if you want this app to be running all the time, so what you can do is you can probably like deploy it on Azure using Azure functions. So there you probably won't be having that much of a cost because it only, I mean, you would have like a free tier where like it only cost you if you have like millions of requests right so you can basically use that or other uh, you know basically api hosting platform so you can try that as well but for a temporary case when you just want to do a demo you can just use this ng rock replace this you know in your android application and it will like work fine so that's what we are going to do but uh, in order to do this we just need this uh, ng rocks authorization token so in this notebook you don't have to change anything just change the token that you have I'll also show you how you can do that. So for that, you need to create a account in ngrock. So just go to Google and search ngrock dashboard and you will see this dashboard link. So make sure that uh, you have signed up for this with some uh, mail ID. And once you have done that, right? So this is the dashboard that you are seeing. In this dashboard, in the left navigation bar, you will see this uh, tunnel sections and within that you would have this uh, auth tokens, which is for authorization. So click there. And here you will see this add tunnel auth token. So click this and you will see this description. So you can just rename this saying that this is for uh, Android app or something. This is just for your reference. And you have this owner, which is basically your ID that you are providing. So you don't have to like kind of do any ACL rules and so on. So once uh, all these things are set, just give this save and this will give you your authorization token. So copy this from here 
and in the notebook that I'm providing, replace it with uh, this particular thing and run this. So I've already kind of uh, generated this. So this is like the previous token that I had. So make sure that you run all these sales once you have updated your auth token. If you want a more secure way, you can probably put this in a .env file or even in a config.json file and load it from it. So once all these things are done, we are uh, kind of tunneling our local uh, URL to the public URL. And this is the public URL that we can use. So first we can make sure that it's working so just copy this public URL and paste it uh, in your browser and uh, after this call docs so this will basically open your swagger page and there we can test our API so uh, the other interesting thing about this is right so this is just one endpoint so similarly you can have uh, three other endpoints let's say diabetes model and then you have art disease and parkinson's model so all these can be hosted in separate endpoints so that within this uh, api right so you will be having three endpoints and each of this endpoint would correspond to a particular disease so that your application can kind of do this prediction for all these different diseases so that's something you can definitely try so now let's test this post api so I'll uh, give this drop down thing and here you will see this try it out. So here I'll just give some random values. Let's say pregnancies values is 2 and glucose value is 100 and blood pressure value let's say that's also 100 and skin thickness is 10. So you can refer to the data set. I'll probably provide that in the repository as well. So if you want like more proper numbers you can refer to that. I'll just give some random numbers here. So diabetes pedigree function should be in this decimal range and let's say age is 25. Now you can call this execute. So here you will see the output as the person is not diabetic, right? So this is the output that we got for this particular uh, data point. So this is the URL that we need to pass, which is this ngrock uh, base URL. And then we have this endpoint, which is diabetes prediction. So if you have some other model, some other endpoints created with uh, app.post, you will uh, probably be using that. So this is a URL that we need to give uh, in our Android application. So once you call, right, so you will also see this response in this uh, UVCon or basically the cell that's running here. You're, you're seeing this 200, okay, right? So this is uh, for the request that I raised. So you can again maybe uh, execute this again. So this will again uh, give you the output here. Okay. So each time this API is called, so you can see this basically output. So these are warnings, but if you want to kind of, let's say, print that input and output in this uh, terminal in this cell output you can kind of include that print statement in this diabetes print thing right so here we are basically having this uh, ngrock uh, thing so it's running on uvcon and this app is nothing but the fast api thing that we run so if you want a detailed explanation for this uh, you know how to build this api and deploy this i'll yeah again link the video so you can refer that once so now let's move on to building this uh, app thing in a very simple way so go to google search mit app inventor so you can see it is like a high level blog based thing which was developed by google and now it's uh, maintained by mit right so this is like really helpful when you want to do like quick prototyping so go to this mit app inventor and here uh, give this create apps and uh, here you need to create an account so sign up with that. So I've already created an account so you can log in with Gmail. So once we have this here, right? So you can skip this tutorial. So we don't need this. So I'll just close this. You also have like different kind of uh, apps that you can build with some templates. So we don't want that. Let's build like a, a you know, app from scratch. So here I can go to this project thing. So I'll give this new project. Uh, I'll call this as diabetes prediction app okay so this is the project that's been created you can see the dates over here and this is where we are going to build it so uh, here we have two parts one is the designer part and the other one is the blocks uh, tab right so in the designer part we will kind of place all the input text fields if you want to kind of display an image or if you want to put some text we will do all those things and all the functionalities will be added there like let's say that we have some text inputs and we have a button so on the click of a button it should get all these variables which is basically this age glucose all these details and uh, pass that or basically post that to the api that we have created and get a response and display it so all those things will be happening in this blog so again we don't have to do any coding so if you are good with android development you basically can do all these things in a better way in a better app uh, you know in, in android studio so probably you would know that with kotlin and other programming language but this is you just don't want to spend a lot of time in ui building so that's the main idea so we are kind of going with this prototyping tool so now uh, we have the screen one maybe i'll just rename this 
so I can click this so this will like open the screen thing so you will see all the components here and the individual components details will be displayed here so we have this about screen and I'm not like changing anything so if you want to put any description about it you can mention it here so I want to rename this screen one to something called as diabetes dot AI right so I'll name this and this title will change so once you have typed it just click somewhere and it will change this one and now uh, what we can do is if you want you can maybe put a text field saying that uh, you know some some kind of a tag or something so what I'll do here is you just have to drag and drop these things so you have a button checkbox date picker and all those things so label is when you just want to display something and, and when you want to get some input from the user you can use this text box thing and you also have slider to kind of get give some like numerical values and all those things so here I'll uh, drag this label and within this label I'll call this as just some name called as sugar sensei or something just some names catchy names that you can display on your app so again this is not like a crucial thing but you can do that so we have this sugar sensei here and i'll add a background color we will just uh, use like a light blue kind of a thing so you can see and uh, yeah, so I can uh, increase the height and width of this. So I, uh, let's say that I want the percentage to be, let's say 15 percentage or something. Let's see how big it is. It's yeah, too big. Maybe I'll use this uh, 10 maybe. This is still big. So you can just go with seven or five or something. Okay, uh, yeah, maybe let's decrease this even and with let's maybe increase it to let's say 50 percent let's see how big the width is so it's yeah, pretty big so i'll just go with the smaller number as 30 and i'll just i can kind of make this uh font bold and if i want i can increase the font size to let's say 18 and now i got to increase the width let's say the width is 50 Right. So this is how you can build a label. And the next important thing is uh, having like appropriate input user input tabs, just like you would have in a streamlet, right, where the user can give in some values and then uh, you would have a button. And also you can rename this label. So here uh, this screen is selected. You can rename this and you can also rename this label thing. So I'll select this and give this rename. Let's call this as a uh, page title or something. Okay, this is just for reference and this won't be like kind of used in or, or basically displayed in the app. So that's one thing. Now let's create these uh, text boxes and for these text boxes, it's basically the features that we are using. So here we have the pregnancies, glucose, blood pressure and all those details, right? So we can use that. So I'll kind of uh, drag eight text boxes here. I can also copy this, do a control C and paste it here. So here you can see we have eight text boxes. So uh, in the first text boxes, first text box, so we need to tell the user what this value is. Let's say uh, this is the age and the next one is the glucose and so on, right? So what you can do is select this. So, or you can also basically select it here. So it will be selected in this uh, screen itself, in the emulator screen itself. So in this text box one, uh, I need to go to this text thing so text is what's the user is inputting or if you want a default value you can have a default value here and give a read only so i'll change this to numbers only and in this int i can say this is age right so the feature that they need to give and uh, i'll maybe rename this to age as well this won't be again used this is just like the name of the text box that box that will be used in this blocks thing and let's say the second text box is let's say glucose I mean you can uh, change the order because it's going to go as a JSON so it will be mapped with the key value so it's okay if you give any orders right so that's other thing and then the text box 2 let's maybe have this as glucose you can change the I mean sizes spacing and all these things so you can basically do that you can also change the phone size to like a uh, tablet size monitor size and all those things and you also have like these different versions so we have ios 13 android 3 to 4 this is android 5 plus so this is like the version that i am using and the next step is uh yeah so this is for a age this is for a glucose level so we have already gave the int and i'll rename this as well to glucose text box 3 will be 
ब्लड प्रेशर एंड इंट शुड बी ब्लड प्रेशर एंड 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 कन्वर्ट ऑल दीज टू नंबर ओनली सो दैट इट्स नॉट गेटिंग रेड एस स्ट्रिंग Uh, in that case you just have to kind of do that conversion in your code as well so we don't want to do that so i'm just getting like only numbers value okay and the next thing that you are getting is skin thickness or you can just do a split screen here so that this can happen quickly okay so uh i think it's it's better if i just do this one it's a right so we have the blood pressure skin thickness value copied changing this to numbers only renaming this to skin thickness and select and text box 6 would be bmi you can actually leave this as text box 1 2 and all those things but in blocks it would be a bit uh, confusing to map all those things so that's the reason i'm renaming it here as well so for all these things you can use numbers only and you have diabetes pedigree function age we have already done and finally we have this pregnancy thing so text box 7 i'm going to rename this to diabetes pedigree function int should be the same thing numbers only and finally we have the age done so pregnancies so in should also be pregnancies okay so numbers only right so we have built all those things so just make sure that all these are numbers only and the ints are properly given so this is age and int is also age and then we have glucose uh, blood pressure skin thickness insulin oh uh, yeah here we don't have this numbers only and bmi diabetes pedigree function and finally we have the pregnancy so these are all the users value that they will be typing in and the next step is uh, creating a button so here you in this user interface you have button right so you also have this option this chat sorry data science thing you have anomaly detection thing regressions and so on so you can basically explore explore all those things as well maps all those things so yeah you can do an exploration here so let's just stick to a basic app for now so here i'll drag and drop this button right and i'll uh, rename this button to let's say predict again this is the name that it's going to refer to but that's not the one that's displayed here so this text for button one that's coming from this text so it's it's basically the text it should display on the button so i'll call this as predict or you can have this check or something right so we have this predict button over here and then uh, the other uh, thing that we need to include here is the web component so if you scroll down in this left navigation bar you will see this connectivity and you have this web option here so there are like other options but we are going to use this web option which is basically used in order to kind of uh, link our uh, endpoint which is the ng rock api and get a response from it post all the values that the user has given post it and get a response so drag and drop it here so it will be uh, present in this non visible components because this won't be visible in that in this web component you know you don't have to kind of like uh, do anything so it can be just as is okay so now we have built the design for our application the next step is uh, to do the blocks thing yeah i think i missed one thing so the next step is finally we need to display the result right so for that you can again use a label because here this is not something the user is going to give so here i'll have a text for label thing and in this text for label uh, first i'll just have like an empty uh, string right because uh, when the user opens it for the first time right so there wouldn't be anything so once it gives a response you will see an output so that's the reason so i'm just having this as an empty string and then you can if you want you can increase the item width maybe i'll increase first i'll just have a text saying that test result so this will be displayed first or yeah we can have this this is okay so test result and i let's have this as 5% 
and width let's have like 50 percent so that so what we are basically going to display here is uh, this apa this endpoint returns a string right so that's what we are going to display and the other uh, complexity maybe you can do is you can uh, kind of send it as a json and that json has to be processed in this app so for that you again need to do some processing in the blocks but you can definitely definitely try that out so we have this test result if you want you can add a background color with blue or something or you can also make this bold so you can try all those things the font size will also increase this to 50. okay so the next step is uh, we have all those things done here so go to this block section and you will see this whiteboard here and we need to basically uh, add functionalities to these text blocks mainly to the button that we have created so scroll down you will see all the components you have over here and here first i'll go to this button which is this predict and here i'll drag and drop this when predict click so this basically tells you like what should happen when this button is being clicked and then we need to add a procedure to this so you here you will see this built-in uh, kind of blocks that we have in this MIT thing and here I'll go to this procedure and drag and drop this to procedure so here what we are basically doing is when this predict is clicked we are going to uh, tag all these user inputs to specific variables as x1 x2 all the way up to x7 right so we have eight variables and then we post these eight variables to the api that we have created so for this you have this two procedures thing and uh, here you see this small gear icon settings kind of a symbol click that here you need to mention how many inputs that you have so here you have this input x so drag and drop in this uh, kind of a puzzle thing that you see over here so drag and drop this eight times or you can basically copy this and paste it here so that can also like work so copy that such that you have like uh, eight inputs so paste it over here so we should have eight inputs so we have x1 x2 x3 x4 should let's say x4 would go here hmm. oh sorry so i'll delete this x5 and uh, we have this x5 here x6 x7 and x8 so we need to you now map those eight uh, pregnancies, uh, diabetes, predictive function, and all those things. So this is my X1, X2, X3, X4, all the way up to this one, right? And now the next step is to this uh, predict dot click, right? So we need to map all these uh, variables. So how we can do that is again go here. So previously you wouldn't have this call procedure thing, but as we have added all those variables in this thing, so now you would see this section called as call procedures. So now drag and drop, so you can see this. Uh, kind of little shapes that tells you like which goes into which shape and so on so here i'll paste this uh, call procedures thing now we need to map the text that we are getting from all this user inputs so first we are just kind of it's like declaring the variables as x1 x2 x3 all the way up to x8 and now we are uh, mapping it with the values that the user is giving so for that go to this age thing right so in this age so we have like different things that we can choose from so what we are interested in is age text so now we need to drag here and fit it over here okay so what this basically does is the user will uh yeah so the this is the vh tab right so the user will give in some values and uh, they will give like all these values and once the predict is clicked so this block will kind of happen and when it's clicked we map this age text basically what's the value that the user is giving that will be mapped to, to, to this variable called as x and the next one is glucose right so again go to this glucose you will see this glucose text drag and drop it here so or what you can basically do is copy this age dot text thing paste it eight times uh put it in this x3 x4 x5 all those things there is like an easier way to change this so instead of like dragging drop going to like each of these variables and and doing that what you can do is uh, you see this drop down right so you will here you will see all the things that you have created in the alphabetical order so you can just go here look at like the order that you have created so we have age glucose blood pressure yeah you are seeing this order here as well so we have age glucose the next one is blood pressure and then you have the skin thickness insulin bmi diabetes pedigree function and finally we have pregnancies so we have all the eight variables here so now what's happening is 
once the button is clicked so we are kind of calling this procedure which as like all these eight variables we are mapping those values age glucose all these values to these variables and now we need to kind of uh, pass this as a json to the api that we have created so now let's see how we can do that particular thing so uh, for this we'll be using this two procedure block that we have created you can move this page if you want a bit so here uh, i'll go to this web uh component right you can actually change this web component i'll maybe rename this saying that this is uh, let's say api or i can call this as connect to api you can give any name just use the one that maybe let's say that makes sense to you uh, now we have this as connect to api so click this and you have like all the things that you can do so we have this got file got text so this got text is basically used when uh, the api has been kind of like called and you get a response from it so that's when you will use this so we will look into this a bit later so we'll be requiring this now uh, we need to mention the url for uh, this api so scroll below you will see this called as connect to api url but not that one so you are saying this set connect to api right so uh so it's basically like you can use this uh, connect to ap url if url is being already created as a global variable and you are using that but here what i am doing is dragging this pasting it over here now it's uh, kind of it you can see that this block needs a value block connected to its socket now uh, come to this text now we just need to put the url in this particular space so i'll come to this text you will see this uh, basically string kind of a thing and drag and drop it here so this is where we need to pass the url that we need uh, in this case right so here it's basically this uh, public url slash uh, diabetes prediction so this we have already seen in swagger right so copy this you, you can just do this from here copy this url just add a slash and diabetes prediction which is our in point right so yeah you can also have like an if condition uh like again as i said right if you let's say have a drop down for different diseases you can have a if condition saying that if this one is clicked call this api uh, url or i mean basically you can kind of navigate that so we have paste that url here so that's the purpose of this so we are setting this url to this connect to api which is the web component and now uh the other thing is this is not a get api right so we need to post a json data so for that we need to have a headers section so even when we call this api on uh, you know let's say postman or even in python right we need to have this uh, headers thing where it says what's the content type whether it's a json or something like that right so we need to use that one as well so for that again go to this connect to api thing all these steps should again remain same if you are deploying other model just replace the model files and other if, if you need like additional things you can do that so here scroll to request headers yeah, this one so request uh, headers don't use this one so we are going to create this manually so drag and drop this connect to api which is your web component and request request to headers and paste it below this uh, url thing that we have created right here we need to create a dictionary so here uh, the dictionary's key would be content type and the value would be application json so this is again the usual thing that we would pass in a headers of any api so here uh, come back to this built-in features built-in uh, blocks that we have and here you will see something called as dictionaries just like python dictionaries here uh, scroll to the top and go to this make a dictionary and connect it over here right so here we are going to pass a dictionary but we don't need two key value pairs we just need one key value pair so go to this gear icon so in all these blocks right you can go to this gear, uh, uh, gear icon to kind of say how many pairs that you want so i'll kind of remove this one now you just have like only one pair now we need to put a uh, text here right so for that again you can go to this text if you are having i mean you can also store this in variables and use it but i'm going to use the text directly so i'll paste it over here uh you can also again look at the shapes that we have so only those shapes fit into those key old kind of a thing that we have over here so key should be a content type so this shouldn't change so here i'll call this as you already have the quotes so you don't need that as this is a string value so say uh, content with uh, uppercase c and type with uppercase t okay and value should be your application slash json so it, it's just telling the api call or call that 
we are going to send a json and get a output from it right so that's the purpose next is uh posting the json to this so for that uh, again the one drawback that we have over here is uh we can't send a json directly so what we are going to do is get all these variables process it as kind of a string and then post that string or basically text as a text json and get a response okay so let's see how we can do that so come back to this uh, connect to api and you will see this uh, post text this is a post api if you are using a get right so in those cases we won't be passing anything so you can just use a get api instead so you won't be having this uh, json thing so you can basically uh, add these variables using a join string so in, in this text right so you will see this join so you can uh, kind of uh, have this url at first and then have a slash use a variable name put all those values and then use a get string but if you want to post a json right so that's when it's become a bit complex so here we are going to come to this connect to api and here i will use this uh, post text you can again post a file after saving it here in this particular space and you can post that file but we are just going to post it as a text so i am seeing this over here patch text this is my post text thing so now drag and drop it over here and now we need to put a join uh, string basically here we are putting this as a string but again this will be encoded and sent in the form of a json so we don't have to use it we should use this join thing so here when you give like different text pieces right uh, that will be uh, kind of like concatenated together and it will be sent so here we need to kind of uh, have this one basically so here we need to have this uh, curly brackets pregnancies and uh, these will be coming as variables as x1 x2 and so on so maybe you will understand it better when i do this so go to the settings and you need to increase the strings and the number of things that you need is 2 3 4 5 and 12 13 14 things so i think it need like 18 things if we want we can delete this later right so now uh, i can add a text to this so the text would be uh, this one i'll add this so the first thing that you need is uh, the curly brackets basically your json thing as we have this restriction on you know sending this as json we are doing this in the second text right so this will join all the strings that you have that's the purpose in this i'll just maybe copy this and paste it over here so next you have this age right so you need to put the quotes uh, again the quotes are important if you don't use that it will be concatenated directly without with this curly brackets right so you shouldn't consider the outer quotes that you have that's saying that this is a string but that won't be included in your json but we need this quotes in the json right as you can see so you need to mention that as well so i'll come back here call this as ch put that colon as well here and then uh, copy this maybe give like maybe one space and and paste it here because here the variable should come the age value which is x1 or just x and then here let's say we have this glucose thing right so that should come over here so uh just leave one space in all those spaces so we have six seven and eight so the next thing i'll paste it here so i think we need two th two more things okay so let's put it here if we have eight and yeah we don't need this last one i guess uh, okay let it be there. right so now we have all the keys uh, but again we just have to rename this so first one is age and then we have this glucose thing right maybe i'll copy this from here so that i'm not making any type of you make any type of again we know that it's going to make an error because these are the actual key values that the ap needs so the next one is glucose and then we have the blood pressure and 
Next is skin thickness. Insulin. Oh, and the other things that I forgot to add the comma, so you can add it like before each of these keys, except age, we don't have the comma over here. So it's basically like the keys that you're seeing at the end. So we need to add that as well. I'm not sure if they have added a kind of block to add JSON. You can explore it, but I think they haven't, but you can mention in the comments if they have added it by the time you're seeing this video. So we have this BMI thing, insulin, BMI, diabetes pedigree function and finally i think we have pregnancies right now we need to map it to the variables that we have and finally we should close this curly brackets right so i'll copy this thing again paste it over here he plays this opening curly bracket with a closing one and then now we need can, we can basically map the variables so you can see age is mapped to x right so here uh, you will see this variable options so here uh, kind of get this get thing this is to get that uh, uh, variable value so paste it over here here if you do this drop down right you will see this x1 because this is connected to this procedures thing that's how you can use this x1 maybe here i'll say that this is x uh, copy this once you do that from the drop down paste it over here you can change it to x2 from here but i'll just paste it like eight times and finally the eighth one so we don't need this i'll delete this right so we have x the next glucose is x2 as you can see uh, i'll change this to x2 and then we have blood pressure as x3 Similarly, we have x4, x5, x6, x7, and finally it's x8. Right. And again, I missed those commas. Maybe I'll add it before this. So, I mean, we don't have to put any space as this will be a JSON. So, that's probably fine. You don't need that. So, instead of age, right, as this is a starting thing, you don't have a comma. And before all this, quotes of all these keys, put a comma so that it would be a proper json once it's been like kind of passed insulin and then we have a pmi here also and the final thing is your pregnancies right so we have age glucose blood pressure skin thickness insulin bmi all these things tagged to those variables so uh, now let's see what would happen so i'll just zoom out a bit so we have this designer tab here we can see we are uh, these are just labels right so this these doesn't have any functionalities but the other things have so we have this first tab which is age you can hover over it and see the int but in your application right so that will be present like in a grayed out way so you will see age here and you will see this uh, insulin and other things here. so so that it's like better for the user to see like what values they need to give so they can give all these values and click the predict and when the predict button is clicked uh we map all these variables that the user has sorry the values that the user has given to the respective variables and in this procedures thing we are mentioning the url that it needs to go which is this ngrock url and if you are let's say deploying it on azure we know that that url has to be used here so you can use that and then we have this request status thing where we are saying that it's going to be a json and then we have this post text we are joining all those things and then uh this basically will be passed as a json as we have mentioned here it's an application json and posted to this thing if it's a get you just use a get api right so we are not posting anything just getting some values or some uh, json or a string out of it by getting by basically using the url the next step is getting the response and displaying it let's see how we can use it this is like a pretty simple step okay come back to connect to api and you see this when connect to api got file right so we're not going to got a get a file but we are going to get a text so that we can use again if you are passing a json you need to parse this text in order to build this json get the respective output you want let's say there is a label and a string associated with it let's say there is a label key value pair and a, let's say another uh, string uh, something like this so we have uh, output as label which is zero and the string says let's call this as output string or output and this would be 
the person is not diabetic right so we have something like this now uh, let's say you just want the label you don't need the output but this is what your api returns so in that case your, your blocks should parse this json and get the appropriate key value pair and just display the zero on the screen so that's how this works but in this case uh, we have a simpler use case where we are just having the string right so uh, you can come back to this mit app inventor thing uh, get this got text because it's going to get a text and not a got file thing right so i'll drag it over here and we need to add few things so uh, i'll go to this model response which i've created as a label one. Oh, i think i've named it so this label one is like what's the model is giving us a response right i'll rename this to model icon sorry underscore response and the initial text that it would have is test result and once the you know we got the result we will display whether the person is diabetic or not again go to this block so this would be renamed to model response click this now uh, scroll below and see where you have this uh, model response text right so you shouldn't use this because this text right so we are going to fit the response from the api later so drag and drop this one here fit it so here it's it's it doesn't have a value yet so it should get a value what the user is giving right so for that uh go to this get thing connect to api okay it's, it's in variables right it should be in returns the value of this variable go to this git response content right so what it's it, what's basically happening here is so these are all the different variables that we have so you can see url response code response type and get i mean response content response content is like what you are getting over here so uh, what we are doing is once the user has clicked the button once we have posted the json to the api and it returns some value whether the person is diabetic or not that will be stored in this response content variable and then we are getting that response content and kind of feeding it to this model response.txt where model response.txt is nothing but this this label that we have over here you can see the name here so this is how this works right and uh, there is another uh, interesting features that feature that you can use you have this response code right so 200 is for successful response code so you can see it over here so 200 means like it, it worked well you don't have any errors right uh, if it's 200 you can go ahead and do this if the response code is something else in that case you can say or even you can return that uh, error on the screen so you can kind of do some error handling there so you would have like a if block here and do that but for now let's not make it like a you know more complex but that's the overall idea so these are all the three blocks that we have and that is all like we have built our app and we just have to publish it so let's just go through this quickly so the predict button is being clicked uh, in and uh, when it's clicked like we are mapping those to the respective variables and then we are having this two procedures thing uh, kind of giving the url which host our uh, models api and then we are creating a dictionary as content type application json and kind of concatenating this json in the form of a text which will be in the end it will be kind of posted as a json and once we get a text from this api right uh, we pass this response content which is the output given by the model to this uh, model response.txt which is the label that we have created over here so that's how you need to build this android app and uh, now we need to test it out right so for that again there is an interesting way you can create an emulator but that's going to take like a lot of space and again it's, it's kind of like resource everything so you can do that you have the simulator option just like the way you have an android studio if you have used it and there is another option called as ai companion so there is an app in play store uh it should be available in uh app store in apple but i'm not sure but play store it has this mit app inventor thing so you can kind of use that uh ai companion thing so maybe you can just once you have done all this right so go to this connect go to this a companion or you can connect your phone android phone to usb and you can see the output there as well but i'll go use this a companion thing so now you are seeing this url sorry this barcode right so go to play store and search mit a2 companion so there is uh, an app with this particular name so install it and once you have installed it right uh, i think even i have uninstalled it so it, it's not like a big app so it, it's just like few mbs so i think it's 17 mb so 
once you have installed it we need to open it and scan this uh, barcode and when you do that this app will be opened in that particular uh, AI companion app that they have provided or the other way is you can go to this build and you can create this as an apk file or an android app bundle file uh, but right so it's basically when you want to make some changes it's it's this one is kind of a debug kind of a mode so you can kind of run this and see if it's popping up some errors if there are some errors you can uh, kind of change the code change the blocks here and you can refresh the companion screen so your screen in your phone screen will be refreshed and your updated code will be present so this is like really helpful for your uh, this thing for debugging so i'll go to this a companion i have this code so open this eat sorry mit a to companion uh, and then you will have an option called a scan qr code within that app itself so you don't have to use your mobile phone's camera so open the app and use that camera so you will see a barcode scanner so i'm currently scanning it sometimes it won't work when your phone is on it's not on landscape so if, if it's not picking up the barcode just turn your phone to landscape uh, kind of orientation and scan it so this will kind of load this app to your phone and now you will see this uh, basically this particular app so i can't show you my phone uh, i can't like kind of record that right now but i'll just like give some values and make sure that we are getting like appropriate results so i'll just give the age as 20 in glucose i'm giving the value as 100 blood pressure as also 100 skin thickness let's say 20 insulin 100 bmi 25 diabetes pedigree function 0 0.255 and pregnancy is let's say 2 and i'll click this predict button yeah so uh, what i'm currently seeing now is first it said test result and once i've clicked the predict button it worked and it kind of replaced this with saying that the person is not diabetic right so this is how this would work so everything is working well so there is like uh, no issues here so now what i can do is uh again so if if there are some errors or you want to let's say bold some values and so on right you can go to this i mean make those changes and give this refresh companion screen now your phone screen will be refreshed the app that you are using will be refreshed and the updated code updated blocks will be working on right and once you have done all those testings and you want to kind of export it as an apk go to this build option give this android app now this will build this as an android app or even you can kind of export it as an android uh, app bundle as well so that's that's also like okay and again if you want to publish this on play store you can do that let's say you have like a permanent running link on azure functions or aws lambda those should be a good options because they only charge you the number of requests just like in like so much right but for development we won't reach it but that would be a good option so yeah now this should yeah have this uh, download.apk thing so you can download it uh, in your pc and share it in your phone and download and basically install it or oh, the company yeah so the company has disconnected because i've closed the app in my phone uh, mit a company and thing so it'll give okay so you can either download this apk or open your google camera or something or some barcode scanner right so when you scan it it will install basically download it and you will you can install it i think you will get a warning message saying if you trust this app and so on so you need to like approve that so i'll give this download dot apk thing and this will download it and i can install it in my phone and i can test it out right so that's the process and uh, i can show you the previous version that i've tested so this is how the screen would look like so this is how this would look like at first so you have this diabetes dot ea and then this is the sugar since i tag that we have added if you want you can remove this or add something like this and you can see the placeholders here so it says that you need to put age and glucose blood pressure skin thickness values and so on and then uh, we are just giving all these values and giving predict and it would say that the person is not diabetic here uh, i didn't add the test result thing so in your app right so you will see this test result first and once the predict is clicked the ap will be called and you will get the string over here so this is how this should work so i hope everyone is clear until this point so please try this out this is a really interesting use case and really helpful to you when you want to just do a prototype ui thing uh, i haven't tested the ios devices maybe you can try that out with the monitor tablet size and all those things so maybe i'll just give you a quick overview overview of what we have so make sure that uh, you get all these notebook files and even the model file from the repository i'll also add the model training notebook over here 
so you have this pickle file upload it to your uh, notebook session install all these uh, cells make sure that you are replacing this authorization token so this is my token so i uh, have a place placeholder here in the github repository so go to uh, ng rock as i said uh, go to this ng rock dashboard sign up uh, an account so this is like completely free so you don't have to worry about but i would suggest you to kind of run this on google collab just for security reasons so just go to google and search ng rock dashboard uh, sign up and then you would see this auth token uh, add a new authentication token and basically save this and you will get an authorization token and run all these things so this is like configuring the uh, authorization token so if you don't do this like this would show you or give you an error so once this is done test it out with swagger or even postman you can test it out and then we can come to this mat app inventor sign up and go to this create uh, apps thing so your app will be kind of like saved uh, as your account is linked right you can also export it so you have this build connect right uh, there is another option yeah you can go to this projects and you can download this export uh, selected project dot aia to my computer so this basically downloads this aia file and let's say uh, if you want you can like later come back here and upload it as a file so what i can actually do is export this as this aa right and then i'll probably uh, put this in the repository as well so in that case you can just upload it in your uh, mit app inventor and you will like have all these things you don't have to build it from scratch but i strongly suggest you to just try this on your own so that you have some practice on this and uh, you can just upload it you only have to replace the url because this url will stop now so you need to replace this if you don't replace this probably won't work so i'll give this particular file in the repository as well sign up and upload it here so this would be like a good exercise for you so here we have kind of renamed the screen we have the label and uh, user inputs all those things we have the predict button let's just quickly go through the blocks that we have created so when the predict button is called we are mapping the user inputs to the respective variables and then uh, we have this two procedures thing where uh, we are kind of mentioning the url or the api endpoint on which we need to post this json thing and we are creating a dictionary to mention that the content is going to be a json object and then we are posting this text so we can't post our json directly so we are creating this json in the form of a text with appropriate key names and variables along with those uh, quotes and commas all those things properly given and finally when uh, the api gets a text from this uh, sorry when this kind of returns a response right this particular api endpoint so we feed that to this model response which is the label that we have created over here and we kind of display it here with get response which is the variable that we have over here so yeah i think you are clear until this point so that's it from my side and i'll see you in the next upload thanks for watching